Joining us is Larry McDonald. He is the founder of the Bear Traps Report. And Larry, we've been talking for a while about what might happen here, uh, why J.P. Morgan maybe uh, came in when there were potentially other banks in the running. What have you been hearing? Well, that's a good point. I think that's the key point you just made, because there were other banks in there over the weekend. And if you think about it, at the end of the day, ultimately what the FDIC chose here is to allow J.P. Morgan to take over more than 10 percent of the deposits of the United States of America. So there was a special exemption there. That tells me that it was a little bit of a desperation situation where, I guess, the bids from U.S. Bank Corp and PNC were so low. In other words, those banks are not really, I, I don't think they were strong enough. And my client, our clients, a lot of our clients around the world don't think those banks were strong enough to do this deal. So at the end of the day, you had to go to Papa Jamie and, uh, you know, and, and, and put more than 10 percent of the deposits of the United States of America into one bank. I mean, it does speak to, to the situation, I think. There's a lot of hope that this will kind of put a coda on what we've seen, at least so far, with the bank banking turmoil, that this was the last big unknown resolution. Uh, but Charlie Munger, out over the weekend with the Financial Times, just saying that they are still concerned, he's still concerned with what he sees in terms of commercial real estate and the potential uh, at some of the banks for bad loans there. What do you think? Exactly. Um, this is, I was just going to bring that up. Nobody's closer to Buffett and Munger than you You are. And for Charlie to come out, you know, I don't know, unsolicited for the second, third time in the last two months, uh, he's making a statement there. And if you look at the insurance companies, one thing that I made very public in February, a point that I made, is that the banks were underperforming the S&P 500 by a very large margin. That's kind of a canary in the coal mine. Now the insurance companies are underperforming the S&P since early January by 14 percent. That is one of the largest uh, underperformances in that short period of time. You're going back, you got to go back to Lehman or COVID. So it's very clear, I think, and from what I'm hearing from clients, there's about $2 trillion of losses on the commercial real estate side because all of uh, most of the financing was done at one, two, a little bit under 3% over the last you know decade on all these commercial real estate transactions. Those loans are, I think a lot of them are dramatically impaired with a 5% risk-free rate that's being put forth by the Fed funds rate. So the Fed is up against inflation, but everything they're trying to do to kill inflation is actually further impairing a lot of banks on the commercial real estate side. So do you think, and the only thing I'll say on, on Charlie Munger, I, I don't know that he was trying to make any specific point. He was giving a pretty broad-ranging interview to the Financial Times. Obviously, what was happening in the banking sector would be front and center among the questions that they'd be asking him. I don't think he was trying to send a particular message. I think he's just talking and speaking his mind ahead of the annual meeting for Berkshire Hathaway. Well, you'll hear a lot more of this this coming Saturday. But, Larry, what do you think this does, if anything, to the Federal Reserve and with the Fed coming out on Wednesday with the decision and then the commentary, what we'll hear from the Fed, Fed chairman, um, what's at risk for what this means for other banks? Well, in talking to clients around the world on this commercial real estate problem, you really have to get the Fed funds rate back down to 2%. And when you talk to the big consultants that work for the insurance companies, work for the banks, work in the commercial real estate risk side, they claim that inflation a year from today will be back under 2% and that the Fed over the next year and a half can bring that Fed funds rate way back down. And once it's back down, uh, then a lot of these bad loans on the commercial real estate side will start to look a lot better. Uh, but the problem is, if you look at the Atlanta Fed wage tracker or anything on the wage side, it's very clear that inflation, I'm sorry, inflation is going to be more elevated in that 3 to 5 percent range over the next year and a half. So the Fed has to, the Fed's going to basically have to really tone it down a lot, maybe, maybe project that this is the last hike, because anything they do on the hawkish side will really cause much more financial instability.